What's up guys? Welcome to the bunker. I'm Johnny. Thanks for stopping by. Would you like to improve your accuracy and precision in the workshop in order to get good fitting joints and square project assembly results? Well today I have some measuring and marking tips to help you achieve that. There are so many different types of measuring and marking tools available to help you maximize your accuracy and precision. Along with milling and cutting, measuring and marking properly is also extremely important when it comes to achieving great project results. So let's get started. Before starting a project, make sure you grab all the measuring tools that you'll be using for that project. And you have to make sure that all the measurements align with each other. Just like this right here. The one aligns with the one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's good. Now let's check this one. Those align as well. If your measuring tools do not align, then your cuts will be off and your joints will not line up properly. When you're working on a project, make sure you stick to just one measuring tape throughout the entire project. Because like me, I have multiple tape measures, but some tape measures, you want to make sure that they're aligned with each other. The measurements, make sure that the measurements line up with each other. In this case, this one lines up. So I could use two for one project, but it's safer to stick to just one tape measure. Before starting a project, you want to make sure that your squares are square. The way to do that is you set up your square on one straight edge. You mark your line and flip it over. Put your pencil on the existing line, butt up the square to that line. If you get one solid line, that means your square is square. If one of the lines goes off of the other, that means your square is not square. Just get rid of it and find you a square that's square. Whenever I need to mark a board, let's say here, I want to mark at two inches. I put the pencil right at the two inches and I make like a V or a point. That means my, my measurement is right at the point of that V. Because if you just mark a little line, that line may be slanted. And then when you go to mark your line with the square, you might not mark the line on the proper spot on that line. But with the V, you just put your pencil on the point of the V, butt it up mark your line and what I also do is I mark an X on my off cut or my waist piece that way I also know which side of the line to cut on so in this case I'll be cutting on the X side of the line another tip is if you want to avoid having to deal with fractions you can use the metric system in this case this tape measure has centimeters on one side, inches on the other. So if you want to avoid headaches with having to add and subtract fractions, just use the metric system. If you have to mark multiple pieces at the same measurement, you can use a story stick or any piece of scrap that you have that's long and straight. You can use it as a story stick. What I did here is I placed the mark at two inches, five inches, nine and 11 inches. So all you do with the story stick to mark your multiple boards is, let's say this is your board, you put up your story stick along your board, then you just mark wherever you mark those tick marks, just like that. And then you grab your next piece, put it here, and you mark them again, and you'll have your multiple boards accurately marked. If you need to mark a line parallel to the edge, your best bet is to use a T ruler, just like this one, especially one that is slotted. So that assures that you're always precisely on the measurement that you need it at. And you can come back and use the same slot again on a different board, and it'll be exactly the same as the previous board that you marked. As long as you have the slotted T ruler, you won't go wrong. Another tip is to try and mark multiple pieces at once whenever possible. Just like this right here, I have four strips of wood. Use my square, mark the four strips at one time. And you can even just take them straight to the, let's say the miter saw, keep them together and just use that line to cut. And all pieces should be exactly the same size. Here I have some easy math for you. Let's say you want to add two and a quarter inches plus two and three eighths of an inch. All you do is you grab two rulers, you find two and a quarter right here, get the second rule, put the zero on the two and a quarter, and then find two and three eighths on this rule, whatever this is right here, 
four and five eighths, that would be your total. Easy math, just using two rulers. Whenever you need to get a measurement from the end of the board or the edge in and you're using a ruler, in order to get a precise, accurate measurement, you get a stop block, something that's thicker than the board you're measuring, butt it up to the end, then butt up your ruler to the stop block, and that'll make sure that the edge or the end of the ruler is exactly aligned with the end of your board, and then you just make your mark. If you ever have to divide your board into, let's say, three pieces, instead of dividing the width of the board by three, because then you would have to divide seven and three eighths by three, what you do is you line up the end, the zero, on one edge of the board, and then rotate your tape measure till it's on a number that's easily divisible by three. On, in that case, is nine. So then you make your mark at three. And six. So let's see. That's one and seven sixteenths. One and seven sixteenths. So you get three exact sections that are all the same width. If you ever need to get an inside measurement, there's different ways to do that, but I'll show you two ways. You get two scraps of wood, two strips of wood that measure a little more than half of the inside of the box here. You get two of these. You slide them until each end hits the sides. Use a clamp to hold them in place. Then all you do is just measure it 12 and a quarter and you got your inside measurement. Another way to do it is ideally you want to measure out 10 inches but this box is not that big so I'm gonna use the five inches so you make your mark at five inches and then you measure from this side which is seven and five sixteenths plus five is twelve and five sixteenths but like I said if it's a big enough space make your first mark at 10 inches and then you measure from the other side to the line and then add 10 inches make it easy all right guys, those were more than 10 measuring and marking tips to improve your accuracy. There is so much more to learn about measuring and marking. I'm always learning myself. If you all have any different tips that were not in this video, please leave them in the comment section below or you can email me at thebunkersubs at gmail.com. If you found the video helpful, please click the like button. Also consider subscribing to our channel. With all that said, I want to thank you for watching. Y'all take it easy, and remember, exercise your right to bear tools. Over and out.